Hello there, everybody. Welcome to another lecture for the Chem Complete channel. And in today's lecture, we are going to continue our discussion about enolate chemistry, and we are going to look at mixed aldol condensations as a follow up to the self aldol condensations we studied last time. So that is all coming up on the channel right now. All right, everybody, before we get started here, a quick shout out to chemcomplete.com, where you can go find all sorts of free resources if you sign up, as well as paid for guides that can walk through complicated organic chemistry topics such as aromaticity or NMR spectroscopy and solving for unknowns. There's all sorts of stuff available to support the channel over there for only a couple of dollars. And as always, watching the videos here are the greatest support of all. So thank you very much for being here and let's get started. All right, so mixed aldol condensations. Last time we took a look at self aldol condensations and discussed what an aldol was in general. So the term aldol comes from aldehyde and alcohol, which is what we saw as a mixture in the product. And then those aldol products would typically dehydrate if any type of heat was present. So now we are moving on to mixed aldols and mixed aldols are going to be a situation where you will have two different potential enolates that you can utilize. Now to start, let's use a simple example where we have something like acetyl aldehyde, which was one of the examples we used last time. And then we will also use, uh, let's use propanol. So we'll use CH3, CH2, C double bond O, H. Okay. So these are the two different aldehydes that we are going to expose to the conditions. So we'll use our base, sodium hydroxide, and we will predict the various products that come out of this. Now, I will show the mechanism for one of these. However, I'm not going to walk through all four of them. So if you can follow along with one, I will kind of explain what's going on through the rest of them. All right, so we have the hydroxide and the hydroxide is going to act as a base. Let's go ahead and make the acetyl aldehyde the one that is going to form the enolate here. So we'll grab one of these hydrogens that will form the enolate for the acetyl aldehyde. And I'm going to write it in the opposite direction here just for the sake of keeping the mechanism flowing. Okay, so here's our enolate ion. And when we have this, the other aldehyde is going to act as the electrophile or the carbonyl that will accept this enolate here if we're looking at a mixed reaction, right? So in the self reaction, the acetyl aldehyde would react with another version of itself. In the mixed reaction, we're going to end up coming in and attacking the other aldehyde or ketone that is present here in order to create the product. So after the enolate attacks, we would still have the aldehyde portion here. Here's the CH2 that was part of the enolate that attacked a carbon that was a carbonyl. Now that carbonyl has opened up and has become a tetrahedral intermediate here with the O minus. And then let's take a look at what I have here because students can sometimes get lost with this. I've got an ethyl group and I have the aldehydic proton. So I need to make sure that I've got an H and then I also have a CH2, CH3. Okay, now there may be multiple ways of writing this. You could also write this just as CH and then CH2, CH3 coming along the side here, right? So water has formed and as we saw last time in the self condensations we can come and grab a proton from the water regenerate the hydroxide and so the result here would be the following i would get the aldol which is the aldehyde and the alcohol and it would look like this ch2 c now let's draw it this way this time ch there's an OH here, CH2, CH3, right? 
So that is one of the products that we would get from the mixed aldol condensation. Now, don't forget that we can dehydrate this product so we could easily get the hydroxide to come in and when the hydroxide does that it would remove one of these hydrogens the electrons from that carbon hydrogen bomb would go whoops let's try to clean that up a bit it would go here to form a double bond and this OH would leave so the result of that right would be that we get the conjugated system so here's the carbonyl compound we would get the C. Now there's only one H because the other one was removed in the dehydration. Carbon, carbon, double bond. And then if we look, the hydroxide is gone from here. So we have an H. And then we also have the ethyl group down here that would still be present. And so this would be one product that we could get from the mix. Okay. Now you may have heard that I kept saying one product, and I'm saying that for good reason. So the reason that I'm saying that if we take a look here is that we also have an alpha position right here that is also deprotonatable so in other words I could form an enolate out of this particular aldehyde and then it would come in and attack this carbonyl right here so if that's the case then I would get a different product than what I currently saw in the mechanism that we just ran through. So here's the goal. Here's what I want you to try to do. I'm going to rewrite this down here, and I'm going to give you the starting materials, and I want you to see if you can predict all four products that would come out of this. Okay. So you can start by, let's see if we can actually get just the, uh, the, aldol meaning the aldehyde and the alcohol product out of it if you can go to the dehydration step that's fantastic and we'll show that at the end here okay but for right now let's just see if you guys can get the mixture between these and all of the products so to give you a hint there technically would be four products because this aldehyde the acetyl aldehyde can react with the propanal over here which is what i just showed and it could also attack another version of itself so self attack from an aldol perspective has not been eliminated here that is still on the table okay and then the other one is that we could get the enolate at this position on this aldehyde for the propanal and if that's the case it could also attack another propanal which would be a self condensation, or it could attack the acetyl aldehyde, and that would be a mixed condensation. So pause the video and see if you can come up with all four products for the aldol condensations. Two of them would be self, and two of them would be mixed. Okay, so here are the products. We would have, right, base that's giving us this. And so to start off, let's just show these as the aldols or the aldehyde alcohols. So for the self-aldol, we would have the formation of the acetyl aldehyde. That would form a CH2. So that would be the enolate right there. And then that enolate would attack another acetyl aldehyde. And so I would expect that this one right here becomes CH. OH, and then there would be another CH3 here, right? So that OH is the result of the carbonyl. This hydrogen was the aldehyde hydrogen on the second copy of the acetyl aldehyde, and that methyl group would be what we see right here over on the other side. Okay, so that would be one of four products. The other self product one would be the propanal. And for the propanal, you are going to get the aldehyde, the C double bond O, and then this CH is a result of this CH2 being deprotonated and becoming the enolate. So that CH is going to attack the carbonyl, but it would also have the methyl, right, that is still on the other side of it. So this methyl right here, that would still be present. And from there, you would have the enolate attacking the carbonyl. 
So the carbonyl would be CH. You would have an OH here. And then you would have CH2, CH3. So both of these would be self condensations that result here. Okay. So the other two, hopefully you can follow along with this, that we would get would be if we created an enolate like this, right? So here's the CH3. So this came from the propanol and that attacks the acetyl aldehyde. And so we would get CH, OH, CH3. And then finally, the last one would be if we had the acetyl aldehyde once again being an enolate and this time the acetyl aldehyde attacked the propanol and again that's the one that we kind of were working with to begin with right where we've got this ch got an oh and then we still have the ethyl group here Okay, so those would be the four possibilities. The top two would be self, and then these two would be the mixed results that we would get. Now, this goes without saying that this is not optimal for most chemists to be running, right? If I would like to target one of these, the concept of just kind of letting a free-for-all occur and attempting to have all four form is probably going to be detrimental to the yields that I want. So it is very common, it's not always the case, but it is very common to basically, when you do mix aldols, restrict the aldehyde or ketone that is present for one of them. So let me show you an example of this. If I've got a ketone that has alpha carbon, so let's use acetone for a simple example. Then if I'd like to run a mix, what I do is the next thing that I pick out that it's going to mix with, I make sure that there are no possible alpha hydrogens to deprotonate. And so what I can do is something like this. I could say, okay, well, how about I use an aldehyde? And then whatever this other alpha carbon is, it won't have any hydrogen. So a good example of that would be an aromatic ring, okay, because the point of attachment there would not have any hydrogens available for deprotonation and so this guy right here has no alpha hydrogens to be deprotonated okay so as a result that means no enolate can be formed from this uh, benzaldehyde here i can only form an enolate from the acetone and that's a good thing because what it's going to do is it's going to restrict the possible number of combinations. Now, I'm only really going to be able to have the acetone react with itself and then the acetone react with the benzaldehyde in its enolate form to give me two products instead of four. Okay, so this is a much more practical approach here. And if I do this and I were to subject this to NaOH, well, the aldol that would be a self-condensate, I would first form the acetone into its enolate form. So it would be like this. And then instead of a CH3, I'd get a CH2 here. That CH2 would have attacked the corresponding second acetone. And so what I would end up with there is I'd have the OH group here, and then I'd have two methyls as the result of the two methyls that are on either side of that other acetone. Okay, and so this would be an example of the self condensation. And then we would also have the potential for a mixed condensation. So in the mixed condensation, I again have acetate, I'm sorry, acetone as the enolate because I don't have any other option here. And when it forms an enolate, it is going to attack, in this case, the benzaldehyde. So it's going to attack that carbon that has the double bond O. That's going to become an OH down the road. And then I would still have the hydrogen that was a result of the aldehyde portionality right here. And then I'd also have the aromatic ring. So I could put this over here and I could make an aromatic ring out of this. And I would be good to go here. Okay. So again, remember that most of these dehydrate. 
Okay, this is the mixed result here. But if I wanted to show the final, final result as far as once they've dehydrated, it's the alcohol leaving and one of these hydrogens being removed. It's the alcohol leaving and one of these hydrogens being removed. So if I were to do that, then in this case, the final two products would be the following. So for the self, I would have, let's see, double bond O. I would have the carbon. Now this would have a hydrogen. It would form a double bond with the other carbon. That hydroxide has left. And I would have CH3. And I would have another CH3, right? So this would be the dehydrated version of the self-reaction that we just saw above there. And then the last one would be the dehydration of the mixed. So again, starting with the acetone, right? Here's the left-hand side of the acetone, forms the enolate. Now one of the two hydrogens has been removed from that. I form the double bond. The double bond goes to this carbon. That hydroxide up here has left. And at that point, that leaves hydrogen and it leaves an aromatic group. Okay. And so that would be the mixed product that has been dehydrated here. Okay, so again, mixed, you're dealing with an aldehyde or ketone that is mixing with another aldehyde or ketone in order to give various results instead of just a self-condensation. The self-condensation can still occur if you do not control the alpha carbon possibilities you will get a large mixture of products, which we showed right here. And if that's the case, you need to be careful as far as yields and what potentially could come out of that. It's going to be very difficult to form just one of those. So what most instructors will show and what is very common is if you want to implement a mixed aldol, you attempt to usually use one of the two possible reactants as one that has no alpha hydrogens that can be deprotonated to form enolates and that will greatly limit the potential side products that you're not necessarily interested in if this will work at all um, you know sometimes you may not have a choice in, as far as what you're looking for so that really covers mixed aldols and how to assess them and what can potentially come out of them. So in the next lecture, I want to take a look at intramolecular aldols, which is where you basically have a long chain that has two carbonyl groups with alpha hydrogens, and the chain essentially will attack itself in an intramolecular aldol reaction. You usually end up with cyclic products as a result of that. Okay, so that's it. One more shout out to chemcomplete.com. Go over there, check us out. We've got all sorts of stuff, especially those guides. They're really going to help you get through the school year if you need. I've got other stuff in the work, new guides that are going to be uploaded. I have new walkthrough programs that are going to be coming to YouTube this summer, as well as uh, something on Teachable. I'm starting to work with Teachable in order to create a full course that will have office hours and everything else. So other than that, like if the video was helpful, subscribe to be up to date throughout your organic chemistry or general chemistry journey. And if you comment, I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you guys so much for learning with me, and I will see you next time.